So today we are going to go on a grand adventure of learning about movement, inputs, and ray casts. So this is the player node, or the player scene that we started on a while back. And I went ahead and added, uh, we'll start just by looking at this node 2D, uh, just renamed it as a container for these four ray casts that I added. And those are going to be basically what checks to see if we actually can move. So for each ray cast, go ahead and cast it to the appropriate direction. It's so like negative 32. My tile size on this map, or on all my maps, are 32. So just to the appropriate direction. And then we're actually going to go into the project settings and set a few layers in the 2D physics. Uh, here are just a few of them that we'll get to eventually, but the main one that we're going to need is the wall right here. And make sure that the ray casts each of them. Uh, you can click all four of them with Shift and click all four of them at the same time. Uh, and like I said, make sure, especially for today, that wall is clicked. So whichever uh, procedural generation that you've used, you're going to have to go in to each of them, unless you were smart, unlike me, and made an inherited scene of all of them. But you're going to have to go to this tile set and give it a layer and go to that wall layer. And like I said, you'll have to do that for each scene. And one more thing that you'll have to do before it works is you'll have to go into the tile set that we made. And you'll have to go here and click and have to add a collision to that tile set. So this one doesn't have a tile, or this floor that I had, stone floor, it does not have a collision. And the wall will need a collision. So you just click the little square and click it, save it. Uh, hopefully you made it a resource so you can have it just update to all of your uh, maps that you've made. And then, once we have that done, we will go back to the player. So we're going to take a look at the script. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is look at the input function. It's a built-in function, just like process or ready. And we'll go ahead and check for player movement there. If you've pressed the left button, that's what this says, uh, we will immediately uh, update the ray cast. This is why I said it doesn't really matter if you enabled it. I learned this trick just this week from Game Endeavor. Uh, if you update it, you'll get the information right away. Otherwise, it'll, it might take a physics frame or two to actually get the information from the ray, from the ray cast, and you'll end up going through the wall. And obviously that's not acceptable. So we'll update it right away. And then if it's not colliding, we will move in that direction by the tile size. Like I said, our tile size is 32. And you could plus and minus and do just individual numbers for the um, x and y of the position. I think the way I wrote it here is a lot clearer for people to know what's going on. It's all plussing. It just add the vector time, or yeah, the vector times the tile size of the direction that you want to go. And what it ends up looking like is you, you're moving around. Okay. And so now, as somebody that's played a lot of Dungeon Crawl by Stone Soup and a lot of roguelikes like this, uh, it's pretty jittery. It's not a very good feel, and it's really difficult to only do one tile, which is pretty unacceptable, because if you do two or three extra turns, a lot of times in these types of games, you just die. Uh, also, it's very annoying to try and get down a hallway. So we're going to have to do a little bit more to work on this. Now, just as an example, if you were to put it into the process, it, it's even worse. We'll just do the left. Uh, so if we run this, it, it's it's almost ridiculous how fast you go. Like it, it's impossible to only press one. So 
just another reason not to use the physic process. So one thing I wanted to add about this was if you press the button and the event is checked by is action, you can move multiple times. It will tell it over and over and over again that you need to move up. If you just click or if you have it as is action pressed, it will only check it once per press. So you have to click the button over and over again, which gives the control, but it it isn't really that good for moving across. I mean, you're going to have to click the button literally a million times, and that's not really what we're going to... That's not really what we want to go for. This script is pretty much the same code with a few more bells and whistles on it. So the first thing that we're going to add is a boolean, just for a light switch, basically a switch back and forth, uh, just moved. And if we have not just moved, then we'll be able to move. This is the basic idea of that. So we added that to each of these checks. We'll immediately turn it to true. And then we'll start a timer that I added here. And you'll just go ahead and click this, connect it, and uh, just basically turn the switch back off, is what that means, is just turn it to false. So then what you end up with is a, you have a lot more control. It's a lot slower, and you have a lot more control. Now, you can you can move one tile, but it's still a little bit clunky. I, I think this is really slow to move multiple tiles. Um, if you want to move that slow, you can click it over and over again. But if you want to actually get across the map, it, it's kind of, I don't know, I guess I'm impatient. So one of the other things that I like that I just recently found is you can check to see if the event is an echo or a repeat, basically, of the same action. So if it is a repeat, will make the wait time significantly smaller. But if it isn't an echo, then it will we'll still have that control of just moving one tile. And so we end up with, we have the control, like I said, but we also can get across the map when we want to.